Hello friends, welcome to the course on C programming. In this video, we are going to start a chapter called structures, which is divided into two videos. This video will cover the introductory part of the structure and the next video will be covering little advanced concepts in structure. So let us uh, first start uh, asking few questions like uh, why do we really need a structure? What is a structure and how can we use structures in uh, programming? So let us start with the first question, why do we need structure? So to understand it, uh, we have a specific scenario. Uh, let's say I want to store few information about a particular student, let's say roll number, name, and cumulative performance index. So these are uh, few information, few data belonging to a particular student. So let's take one example that the roll number is 53, name is Sai Pradeep, and CPI is 8.9. Now you know that this is very simple to handle in C programming. I can have three different variables. First one is integer, uh, roll number 53. Then I'll be having character array because Pradeep is nothing but a, a group of characters. So we have seen in our uh, array chapter, the third video on string, that uh, how do we store a particular name or a string in a character array. And the last information is about CPI. So I'll be having float CPI 8.9. So, so far this is good, uh, but the question is what if I want to store 5 students information or 10 student information or 100 student information. So we have seen in our uh, array videos that uh, solution to such kind of problem is arrays. So I can have 3 different arrays, the first array on a roll number. So roll number array would be having 5 elements. Uh, the first element containing roll number of first student, second element containing roll number of second student, and likewise. Then I can have second array. A second array would be storing names of all those students. So the first element of name uh, array would be storing Sanjay, first element, second element of name array would be storing Vijay, and likewise. And then the last array would be on CPI. This can be a float array and the first element in this CPI is 5.6, 8.0, 6.8. So important thing to note here is to get a particular student information, you'll have to refer respective element from every array. For example, if I take 0th element, so 0th element from roll number will give me a roll number 12 for a particular student. His name from this second array and his CPI from five, uh, this third array. So roll number 12, his name is Sanjay, his CPI is 5.6. So this is nothing but information about one student. Same way if we refer second element, I'll be getting information about second student. Then third element, I'll be getting information about third student. Means information about a particular student is scattered across different arrays. So this is an issue. and. Uh, if at all I need to implement this, we know that how can we implement using arrays. So this is something that uh, we can, we have seen this in our array chapter, that we can have a simple size, let's say five, later on you can change it to 50 and the program will work, work for 50. So this size is five because I want to deal with five students information. Then I'm creating three different arrays, say integer roll number with a five as size, then 12, 30, 41, 53, 63. So 12, 30, 41, 53, 63. Same way for name, because we know that this Sanjay, Vijay, Parimal, these are all names, and names are stored in single dimensional character array. So we'll be having two dimensional array. One is for this S, A, and J, A, Y, and second array, second dimension is for this five element. So this row, number of rows are five, number of first row, second row, third row, fourth row, fifth row. And for every row, we'll be having 20 characters. So in every row, we'll be having 20 characters. In this case, out of 20 characters, I have used six characters. In this case, out of 20 characters, I have used seven characters. And the other characters will remain unused. That we have already seen in our uh, string chapter of array. And last is CPI. That is nothing but uh, 5.6, 8.0, 6.8. So this is nothing but my float array. So this would solve my problem temporarily. But my main issue is what if I'm having few other 
information about students for, for example what if i'm having uh, let's say date of birth blood group city father name mother name so in all those cases i'll be needing more and more arrays and to get a particular student's information i need to refer to many different arrays in fact all of them so this is an issue now th this is the same thing now if we can store information about student in something like this if we can combine the first student roll number first student name and first student cpi if we can combine and put them together at one place that would be great so this is all about a particular student i know i don't need to go to different different areas to refer only one student information so this is something that we are expecting so like likewise i can have student number 2's detail put together student number 3 details combinedly collected at one place then 4 then 5 so if this can be done then that's great but we know that using the concept that we have learned so far this is not possible because if we try to put roll number name and cpi together array is the only way to do it but array would not permit because the uh, problem with array is it cannot have it cannot store data of different type this is of integer type this is character array and this is float float variable so these all are of different types and array would not permit me to put uh, different data types different data of data types together at one place so solution is structure if at all you want to do something like this if at all you want to put logically related data item together at one place then the solution is structure so while array always stores element of same type either integer means all integer float means all float character means all character structure would allow structure is a method of packing data of different types so structure would allow you to put different data types together at one place so structure is a convenient method of handling group of related data items what is related because the data item that we have seen in our previous slide like roll number name cpi they all belong to student like we did not have uh, let's say hra or salary kind of data because that is something which is not related to student and more importantly of different data types different data types because roll number is of type integer name is of type character array then cpi is of type float so you can combine data of different types so how do we use structure let us try to uh, write a small program so that you'll understand but before we write a program let us go through a syntax the what is the syntax of stru structure so we start with the keyword struct and then we give a name of the structure so strucct is a keyword struct and because now we are talking of student the name of the structure is student and then within these two curly braces i'll be specifying all those members do that i need for example in this case i need roll number name and cpi roll number is of type integer name is of type character array and cpi is of type float if at all i need to add few more members you, you can always put like your address your city father name then 12 standard percentage date of birth blood group so everything that you need for a particular student you will be defining over here let's have another example that let's talk of book i want to store uh, information about different books so for that the structure would look like this that a book is comprising of uh, you know few members like book is always having a title which is character array book uh, is having author sometimes it may have multiple author book is having number of pages which is of integer type it has got price sometimes you want to put isbn numbers and many more information that uh, will be putting up like public publishers and all those things so whatever information you need you will be specifying within these two curly bracket followed by semicolon let's take one example c program so you will better understand everything so in this case uh, th this is the same structure struct student with three members first is integer roll number second is name which is character array and third is cpi which is float and then i'm creating one variable s then i'm creating one variable s 
now in this one this is nothing but you know let us try to compare this with this integer roll number so roll number is a variable of data type int we know that we have already seen in our earlier videos on uh, data types these are primitive data type basic data type built in data types like integer character float so integer is a data type roll number is a variable same way over here this structure student is a data type but this is user defined data type this is not something given in the system we have created our own thing so sometimes they call it user defined data type and s is a variable so now s is a structure of type student and the moment i say student means it, it has got three members so i'll be initializing three values so s equal to 53 53 is nothing but my roll number then pradeep pradeep is nothing but my name and uh, 8.7 is nothing but my cpu so how do i access s dot roll number we'll see in a li uh, little while that how do we access them so this logically looks like this s is a structure with three members roll number name and cpi and these are all the values and how do we access them that s that is the variable name dot the member name variable name dot member name so s dot roll number what is the first element 53 so s dot roll number is 53 so it will give 53 so it will print roll number equal to 53 in output then next is name equal to percentage s so s dot name what is s the structure variable what is name the second member name is the second member so s dot name is nothing but Pradeep. So it would print name equal to Pradeep. Name equal to Pradeep. And last is CPI equal to percentage F. S dot CPI. So as is structure variable dot CPI. CPI is my third member. So S dot third member is 87. So it will give me 87. CPI equal to 87. So this is how you can use a single variable, single structure variable in a program. Now let us take one more program which will cover two structure variables so two structure variables now the same structure we are continuing struct student with the three same old uh, members roll number of type integer name of type character area and cpi of type float now let us have two structures first is s1 so s1 is a structure variable with three value s1 dot roll number 53 s1 dot name pradeep and s1 dot cpi 8.7 so it would look like this s1 is a structure with three variable roll number name and cpi and 53 pradeep and 8.7 are the values respectively let us have another variable let's say s2 so s2 is a second structure variable which is storing second student information so again s2 is of type student means it has got three members so s2 dot roll number s2 dot name and s2 dot cpi the values are 12 sanjay and 5.6 respectively so s2 dot roll number is 12 s2 dot name is sanjay s2 dot cpi is 5.6 then if i print student information number one so student number one so it will print student number one then i'm printing s1 dot roll number so s1 dot roll number is 53 so this is printed over here in case of percentage d so roll number equal to percentage d that means 53 then s1 dot name what is s1 dot name s1 dot name is pradeep so this s1 dot name will be printed over here in percentage s format so name equal to pradeep and last is s1 dot cpi s1 dot cpi that is 8.7 so that 8.7 will be printed over here in place of percentage f so it would print cpi equal to 8.7 so this is something that you are going to get in output student number one which is nothing but this static message and then roll number name and cpi roll number 53 name pradeep and cpi and likewise you can have another statement for second student student number two but this time instead of s1 we'll be using s2 dot roll number s2 dot name and s2 dot cpi what is s2 dot roll number 12 s2 dot name sanjay and s2 dot cpi 5.6 so that we are going to get in our output the student number two roll number 12 name sanjay and cpi is 5.6 so with this uh, we conclude this video i hope that you have understood why exactly we need structure under what scenario 
and uh, how do we uh, write declare a particular structure and how can a structure be used in a C program so in our next video we'll be taking few advanced concept like how do we use arrays of structure then nested structure how can we pass entire structure to the function and a special concept called union so guys hope to see you in the next video until then enjoy C programming